Vim is one of my favorite Linux applications ever. I've talked about Vim on this channel innumerable times. Like, I talk about it a ton. I'm a big fanboy of Vim, and I try to get as many people to use Vim as possible. Now, obviously, I have meandered in the last month or so and have tried Nano, and I really liked Nano, but it wasn't really for me because... And you can say this with me if you've watched that video, Nano is not Vim, right? I'm such a big proponent and user of Vim, it's hard for me to go use something else. And that's really what I learned when I went to use Nano was just that I like Vim too much to use anything else. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to continue to try because I like to try new things and it does give me some content for the channel. So today... I'm going to be talking about an application that I've used many times before, but haven't really given a chance to, and that is the Kate text editor. Now, Kate is a built-in KDE application. It is obviously a KDE application. It starts with a K, so of course it it is. And it is, like all KDE applications, very, very, very full-featured. Sometimes you would think probably to his detriment, but I actually haven't found that to be the case. It's actually been a very steady text editor in the times that I've been using it. So today we're going to be talking about Kate and how it has kind of won me over a little bit from Vim. We'll talk about more of that later. So let's go ahead and jump in. But before we do, if you if you would uh, give me a like on the video, I'd really appreciate it. That really would help the channel. It, it just would be super awesome of you. So Thank you so very much for doing that. Now, let's go ahead and jump in. So let's take a look at Kate. This right here is Kate. And even if you've probably never seen a KDE application before, you'd be able to tell that this is, in fact, a KDE application. It looks like a KDE application, right? It's got all the features that you'd expect as, you know, toolbars all over the place. And if you were to go to the settings panel, you'd see that there are a ton of settings and stuff like that. So it is a very... KDE application right out of the box and I haven't done um, very much to configure the look of, of and feel of it. It just doesn't really need it to me. I just use it the way it is and it does a really really good job of just being a very good application in terms of UI in general. But there's obviously more to an application than how it looks, right? How does this thing function be and why am I saying that it's kind of pulling me away from Vim? I'll talk about that later, but in terms of features Kate has basically everything that you could ask for. Now, you guys have to remember that I'm not a developer, a programmer, or anything of the kind. I am learning Python a little bit, and I've been using Kate to do that. So, I have a minuscule amount of coding experience inside of Kate. So, just to qualify my opinions here, know that I'm not an expert on any of this stuff. But... I will say from my point of view, it has everything that you would need if you're a developer. But also if you're a writer or if you are working in Markdown or basically any of the languages that it supports, you know, writing Bash scripts or PowerShell or PHP, any of this stuff that it supports, it does a really good job of all of this stuff. I would say it's very close to VS Code in terms of simple functionality. And when I say that, what I mean is that it doesn't have as many plugins as VS Code. So there's a lot more you can do with VS Code because the ecosystem is so grand. Kate doesn't have that. It does have plugins. There are quite a few of them, but it doesn't have that breadth of plugin ecosystem. Also, people who use VS Code are very into using VS Code. So leaving it probably isn't you know, something that they're willing to do. But if you if VS Code hasn't sunk its teeth into you yet, Kate is a good starting point and maybe something that you could set up in a way that your workflow suits this better than VS Code ever would. So let's go ahead and go through some of the features. And we'll start off with some of the UI features. And obviously, some of these UI features are just bog standard for a lot of code editors and stuff like that. So it's not going to make anything special here for Kate, but it, I just want to show them to you so that you can see that they have them. So they have the overall document preview over here. I'm sure that there's some spe you know fancy name that this thing has over here, but they have that. You can split. So if you wanted to split vertical, you could do that. So you could have splits and then you could have obviously tabs along the top for different files. So if, you, if you're creating a website, you could have the style.css and the J JavaScript file and the HTML file all open at the same time and switch between them very easily. There's built-in terminal support, so if you needed to do work in the terminal or work inside the project folder, you can do that. There's built-in high-quality search, so if you need to do search and replace within 
your document and you needed to put conditions and filters on top of that search, you can do so. It's much more refined than something like Vim. If you wanted to do a lot of this stuff in Vim, you'd have to know a lot of regex. Here, you don't have to know all that regex because it does a lot of that stuff for you. It also has the traditional project tree and open document tree and things like that. So if you need to if you need to navigate the file system, you can do that very easily right here along the side. You can obviously configure all the stuff to open up upon launch if you wanted to do that. So if you if you always know you want to have the tree open, you can you can have that set up like that very very easily. It also supports sessions. So if you are doing multiple different projects but you don't want them all their their your tabs and uh, splits and all this stuff to intermingle you could go and create a brand new session just like so and you know open up another instance of a document or another project or whatever and then you could go save this session to another one the session two and then if you opened up a new session you could you know switch between them or whatever you wanted to do right it's a great way at project management if you're doing more than more than one project which a lot of people usually do more than one project in this way you can kind of keep them organized and separate i have when I was working with this on, in one of my VMs, basically what I did is I had all my, my Python stuff in one session, and then I was doing some bash scripting in another session, and just kind of kept them separate, which is really nice. And again, this this I, I'm positive that other code editors and stuff like that have this, this same functionality, but Kate is my first kind of introduction to that kind of stuff, so I found it very impressive. Now, obviously, in terms of actually coding inside of Kate, it has functionality for all of that stuff as well, including uh, tab completion and LSP support. So, obviously, most of that stuff will require additional dependencies, things like if you wanted to use the Python, you'll need the LSP Python library package. It's going to be named something different on every single distro, but you'll need a package, and it will usually tell you what that package is going to be down here. I haven't got it set up quite yet. I'm, I just switched to Debian yesterday, so I haven't got it all set up, and I'll probably just do that in the VM that I set up for my, my programming course. But, like I said, there will be dependencies for all these things, and, and like I said, it supports a ton of different languages and stuff like that. So if you go down here, it, you can just see... You know, it's you know supports a lot of like OpenSCAD, and I could just read these for days and days and days, and still just continue on and continue on reading them for days and days more. So if there is a language that you're you know wanting to use, it does support a lot of that stuff. Some, not all of it, I don't think will be supported with LSP, but it does support syntax highlighting of a lot of languages. So if you're coding in a like if you're coding in like Haskell or whatever like that, you can get LSP support set up very very easily, and it works basically how you'd expect it to work. So you know, I, like I said, I don't have it working here because I don't have the paths and stuff set up properly uh, yet, but you know, if, if you're doing like import, it would it would show you options for auto completion and stuff like that. And it, 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 as you go along, it'll show you definitions and how your variables are are stacked and all this stuff, right? So if you are a developer and you can tell I'm not one, given by the fact that I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, it, it does show you all of this stuff that you'd expect from all other you know fully featured code editors, which is again a very good feature. Another thing that I wanted to talk about, of course, is the key bindings. Now, key bindings in a KDE application are a dime a dozen. And I say that because they're, almost every single KDE application has a ton of key bindings. And K is no different. So you can customize every single key binding in this editor to your heart's content. Like, you could spend as much time as you want making this text editor yours in terms of key binding. Every single option, movement, toolbar terminal, all this stuff gives you an option for key binding to control it. And you can change what those key bindings are. Now, like I said, this is not a feature that only belongs to Kate, but in traditional KDE fashion, they do a better job of literally allowing you to change basically anything when it comes to key bindings and stuff like that. And one of the coolest things about a lot of KDE applications, including Kate, is that you can have multiple schemes. So if you are a weirdo, and have multiple key binding scheme needs. I'm saying that was really hard. So for, say for example, you wanted to have both an Emacs-like scheme and a Vim-like scheme. You could do that if you wanted to, and then you could change between them very easily just by doing something like this. 
uh, why you'd want to have to, I mean, your, your muscle memory would be all over the place. Maybe you don't want to develop muscle memory. You want to be, keep your, your, keep yourself on your toes or something like that. Maybe that's the reason why you'd want to do that, but you can do that if you want to. My favorite feature of Kate is Vim mode or what they call Vi mode. I call it Vim mode just because I want to call it Vim mode, but it's really Vi mode. So if you go up to the edit button or the uh, edit menu, and then you go to input modes and click Vi mode, basically what happens is that it get, puts you immediately into normal mode. So you can use HJKL to move around like so. You can hit I to go into insert mode. You can hit DD to delete a line. You can hit uh, U to undo, control R to redo. Basically anything you can do inside of Vi, you can now do inside of Kate. So this is one of the reasons why I said this is kind of winning me over from Vim. Now, first of all, it's not gonna make me stop using Vim. I Once I go to a window manager, I'll no longer wanna use a GUI again. For whatever reason, when I'm in a window manager, I'm much more likely to wanna use the terminal. When I'm in a desktop environment like I am right now, I'm much more interested in using a GUI. I don't know why I feel that way. It's really weird, but that's just kind of the way my brain works so when I'm using a GUI editor I want my Vim binding still and this allows me to have that now now it works phenomenally well it's almost like Vi or Vim is right here in front of me but with all of the accoutrement of I'm not French so I apologize for that right away uh, <laughs> uh, all of the bells and whistles of a GUI application are here while still allowing, allowing me to have the motion so I can you know go 10 J and it'll go down 10 lines I can go you know 10 K and it'll go up 10 lines you know it, it's just very good and visual mode is here as well you can do visual block mode if you wanted to you can even use command mode if you wanted to use command mode and one of the coolest things if you, is if you have a whole bunch of custom key bindings inside of your vimrc you can actually import your vimrc key bindings right inside of kate so you have all of those available to you so if you use a custom leader key or something like that a lot of that stuff can be imported right here inside of kate i don't think that's going to import your plugins and stuff like that so don't get excited there but if you have a whole bunch of key bindings that work with your Vim, you can import them into Kate, and that's really nice. Let's go ahead and take a look a little bit at the, the settings. So there are, in traditional KDE application fashion, a ton of settings. The best part, the absolute best part, is the search panel, because this is not something that a lot of KDE applications actually have in, in order to you know, navigate through this, the settings panel. They have a search button here, and if you wanted to search for like Vi mode, like so, you can find all of the settings for Vi input mode. So you can choose that, you can make it so that Vi is the default mode. You can choose, you can see here where all of the Vi settings are, including custom key bindings and stuff for normal mode, insert mode, and visual mode. You can do all that stuff from right here. And the search box is just a phenomenal thing to have when you have this many settings. And it's pretty rare. A lot of settings, a lot of applications that throw a ton of settings at you don't do a good job of discoverability of those settings. And that's a big problem in a lot of KDE applications, but not in this one. There are a lot of settings for appearance, so you can choose, you know, the font, the font size, line space, the style of the cursor, and how many, the show the indentation line. So if you wanted to make sure everything's indented to the proper length, you can do that. You can show the line numbers, you can not show the line numbers, you can change the color scheme. So you can download a whole bunch of different color schemes if you want. It comes with a whole bunch of them actually installed, which is nice. Uh, usually, you'd only have like a few color schemes, but this one has quite a few color schemes already pre-installed. Plus, of course, you can create your own, which is, I mean, have fun. I think I will. You can change a lot of the settings for general editing and text navigation and indentation. So if you're particular on how many spaces you use for tabs and so on and so forth you can make all those changes here you can change how it saves and save behavior you can change a lot of the other behaviors as well when it comes to tabs and sidebars and things like that the one thing i haven't noticed is a place where you can move the tabs to the bottom i haven't seen that particular feature here anywhere so maybe that's missing uh, which is a little bit disappointing because I'd prefer them to be along the bottom, but whatever, not that big a deal. You can change how sessions are done. You can change 
auto load of sessions you can so if you want to load the last session so if you're always coming back to the same project you could do that and just have it load the last session that's nice uh, here are the plugins that, that they have available to you one thing that they d don't seem to have is a way to upload manual plugins now it's possible that there's like a file somewhere that you could drop a plugin into and then it would just appear here but normally when a kde application has extra additional third-party functionality to be added to it they have a button that you would click on down here like uh get new schemes or get new plugins or whatever but that doesn't seem to be here uh, so there aren't that many plugins but there are quite a few and the one things that I'm seem to be missing are like a live preview of like Markdown, uh, HTML, and stuff like that. I don't see any of that kind of stuff here. Actually, it might literally just be right there. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Let's let's go here. If we go to preview, no, that's not the right one. Uh, maybe it's you got to press. No, I don't know. It's possible that that just needs some set up, setting up or something like that. I'm not sure. I think I did some Googling and then they do have it built in, but I'm just not sure how to set that up. But anyways, like I said, there are plugins here, not a lot of them, but you'll f probably find what you're looking for here anyways. There's a lot of settings here for the LSP client as well. You, you can see allow and block servers. You can change a lot of the client settings. There, there, The color picker here is actually a plugin that I installed, which is uh, if you're working in any HTML or CSS or whatever, that's really invaluable. And there's some settings for project because there is Git integration. So if you want to uh, integrate your your Git repositories and push, merge, stash, do all that stuff right from inside of of Kate, you can do that. Um, and as you can see, there's just a ton of different features here and settings that you can change and kind of customize to make Kate as much your own as possible. And that's a great thing for an IDE, which is basically what Kate has become. It's not a text editor, uh, e even though that's what I usually use it for. So that is Kate. It is awesome. And like I said, it has pulled me away from using Vim while I'm here in Plasma. Whether or not I'll continue to use it when I'm in a window manager, I don't know. Maybe a little bit, because I do... It does seem to handle large files better than Vim does. And I deal with really, like, many-lined files in my j day jobs. So maybe I'll end up using Kate a little bit more often just because of that fact. Why Vim continues to be sl a little bit slower than it should be for me, I still don't know. Probably a plug-in somewhere along the line. But I'm not giving up my, my plug-ins, so you know whatever it's my fault whatever it is anyways so that is kate if you have thoughts on kate you can leave those in the comment section below i i did not go over every single feature i would have been here for days to do that so i just kind of went over the ones that were important to me uh, but if you have questions you can leave those in the comment section below if you have comments uh down there as well if you haven't already leave a thumbs up on this video it would really help the channel you can follow me on mastodon or odyssey those links will be in the video description you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast thanks to everybody who does support me on patreon and youtube you guys are all absolutely amazing without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very very much for your support i truly do appreciate it you guys are all awesome thank you so very very much for your support thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time